I'll give you Michael Corday with his talk, Everything I Know About You. So I'm, I'm feeling inspired. Everybody smile for your Fuji photo. Come on. There we go. All right. Oh, I've started. Sorry. Uh, blind Search. Have we seen Blind Search? No. You all suck. Blind Search was this little website that was built that allows you to search Google, Bing, and Yahoo all at the same time. And what happens is you get three search results and you get to pick which column you like most. So look at those three and in your mind pick the one that you think actually best represents that search term. And then on the site you get to click on which one you voted for and pick the search engine that you actually, um, uh, the results that you thought uh, were it. Quite often I found that not everybody picked Google. Just to pre, to whatever the thing. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Google actually wins and you'll find out in a second what, what happens. Uh, but it was pretty interesting to see all these um, people do searches. And the very cool thing about this is actually 1.8 million people did searches. The thing went nuts, it went viral. I'd like to thank Google for the ad words, by the way. It's beautiful. Um, so 1.8 million people searched and it was quite a large experiment that, that, that underwent. Um, the results, if you wanted to know what the results are, they look something like this. Right, so if you take branding out of the equation, first observation is if you take branding out of the equation, things are not always what they seem. Uh, so Google still wins, followed by Bing, followed by uh, a bit of Yahoo loving. And these, these are kind of on par with uh, searching for images and searching for text. And then I thought, what would happen if I look at this mine of data? All these people searching with nobody watching, without society watching. What can I learn about us? And that's really what I want to talk about, the things that I've learned about us. Uh, through uh, the almost hidden searches that are the, the, the blind searches. So I took all that data and I mashed it up against the internet and I went, you know, get some name databases, get some sexual position databases, get a whole bunch of databases. What can I learn about us and rank them? And the thing that I found most, ready? Guess what number one was? That's right. I've always wanted to stand between two big boobies. Hello. All right. So the thing that I learned about us is number one is sex. The phrase sex was number one. But every other related word to sex, like fuck, tit, cock, the rest of it, is all by far the number one search phrases. The other thing that I saw was a massive, massive amount of names. Name, we searched for names. It was the second most searched thing outside of sex by a distant, a distant second, but names. And interestingly around names, um, celebrity names. 4% of the searches we're actually celebrity names, names for celebrities. So we still have this you know, society that likes to look outward and aspires a little bit. Um, so 4% of the searches uh, were celebrity names. But the more interesting thing about the names, when I mapped up the name databases, was 12% were our names. We are fucking vain, right? 12% <laughs> of the searches were for names that didn't exist in any celebrity database. You ain't seen vain yet, people, until you have searched the actual search results for your own name. And these are people that have searched for me. And if you're the fucker who wrote this, you please let me know. Because I, I want to know why. And, I, and, I, and, and for the record, I'm actually not an acrobat. I might look like an acrobat, but I'm not an acrobat. The other thing I found that was interesting was the amount of people that searched for actually Yahoo and Google and Bing. I'm like, hello. <laughs> quite, quite obvious, right? But then I realized why they were, why they were doing that. It's because the, always the preceding search was for the word search engine. These are the, this is the results for the word search engine. Interesting, no one actually thinks they're the best search engine. All right? Google still thinks AltaVista's around, which is quite, <laughs> quite interesting, uh, um, which I found interesting. The other thing I did, and this, this concept of positive and negative words has been around a few times today, which is quite interesting. I wanted to map positive words and negative words against the searches. Do we innately search using positive language or negative language. Also translated as, are we gonna live longer or shorter, it turns out, if you're a nun. Positive words, these are the, so there was probably like 3,000 positive words that, that, I, that I picked in, and 3.77% uh, of the searches had positive intonation in them, right? That means 3% of us are gonna like live, and the rest. <laughs> the negative words, there were more negative words than positive words, which was quite disturbing. Still not a large volume, because most searches are actually quite short, but out of the, all the searches, there were more negative words than positive words. The biggest disappointment was this. You ready? My favorite word in the whole wide world, love, three fucking times. Three of you, three of 1.8 million people searched for love. Isn't that sad? <laughs> it, is, it is so like, I, weep, I wept when I saw it. I had to recheck the database. It's pretty sad. So it turns out, 
we were all very vain, sexually frustrated, insecure, loveless pessimists. But there's a positive side. The thing that reassured me that this was all good was this. The searches are quite mercurial. They change over time with what's happening with the times. And the biggest searches at the moment are the phrase Haiti, Chile, and earthquake. And I love the fact that underneath the private searches that we do, we still actually care. Thank you.